Happy Halloween! I know, it's not Halloween yet, but this is my Halloween special. So, I'm re-recording this intro because I already did it, but halfway through my meal, we ended up with a family emergency. I had to shove everything in the refrigerator and start again the following day. So, some of my things didn't turn out like I liked because I had made them prior. You'll see. So, anyway, what we're going to do today was I was going to surprise the kids with a Halloween meal when they came home from school. Surprise was blown because we had to do it on the second day. So, what did we make? We had uh, mummy hot dogs. We made homemade ghost french fries. We had blood salad. We had... Uh, uh, candy corn jellos and a glass with hands on it uh, and we had some candy corn I think that's all we had I'm pretty sure that's everything it might be a little bit of a long video I haven't started editing it I will do my best to keep it down I try to keep my videos 20 no more than 20 22 minutes but when you're doing multiple things to show how to do it does run long so, without further ado, let's get it, let's go. I can't see heat up the pots because I already did it. So, let's get it, let's go. Let's go see what I did. Come on. All right, here's what you're going to need for the candy corn jello. You're going to need some whipped cream. They didn't have any of the dairy-free when I was in there, so I'm just going to make it from the heavy whipping cream, the dairy-free. Um, I bought these glasses at Dollar Tree. They also just have the glass portion. They're like six for a dollar. These were each a dollar twenty-five. I thought the kids would love to have these glasses when we're done. They could have them. So you're going to need some type of a glass to put it in or vessel, I guess. You're going to need some whipped cream, some yellow... Yo, I keep saying yo. You're going to need some yellow gelatin and some orange gelatin. Uh, they didn't have a big box of the of the yellow, so I bought two little boxes, uh, orange, and then, of course, some candy corns. First thing we're going to do is make the lemon jello. Okay, I'm going to add two cups of hot water. I boiled that water. Two packages of yellow jello and we're going to give this a mix now i'm not going to lie this side dish dessert whatever you're going to want to call it does take a little time because you have to do it in in sittings because i got to do this and then i got to wait for it to firm up before i add the orange so it does take a little bit of time you got to be patient with it so what we're going to do now is going to pour some of this jello down into these glasses. I'm gonna go right about there and see if I can make that much in each of them. Hopefully I'm not going too high. There we go. So now I'll put those in the refrigerator until they firm up and maybe about if i remember i'm hoping i'm gonna remember if i can remember i will try and drop like a candy corn down inside just like bloop, one or two down in there i don't know i'm gonna try i always forget all right i'm hoping it's gelled up a little bit i want to stick a couple of corns down in there let's see if i can anyway Ah, because we could just drop a couple down inside. Boom. Wow. Looks good, doesn't it, Eric? Yeah. Right there. Okay. Okay. I what I did was because I waited too long, I took a skewer, I put it in there, and I pushed it down inside. Now I'm going to put these back in the refrigerator, let them finish and harden up, and then we're going to add the orange to the top. Okay, so we're going to go in with two cups. I forgot to mention that 
You are to add also two cups of cold water to the other one. I think I shut it off and did not show it to you. But I did add it. All right, so two cups of hot water. Boiling water. And now we're going in with the orange. Got to give that a mix just to dissolve it. Two cups of the cold water. This is a smaller bowl than before. I had a great big bowl before. Same color. All right, so I'm gonna pour some of this back into the cup and I'll get the glasses out of the refrigerator. Okay, to this, we're gonna add the orange, but not all the way to the top. I wanna leave a little bit of room for the whipped cream. Right like that, boom. And we're gonna fill up all of them the same way. Because you gotta have the white on the top of the candy corn, right? And there they go. They're starting to look cute, aren't they? Yes, they are. You can't tell me they're not. So I have extra jello. I've just been throwing it in little containers. Okay, so that's what it's gonna look like. The color's kind of melted. You can't really see the yellow in the bottom as much, but I did let it sit an extra day. I think that's something to do with it. Um, I, I was able to find some Ready Whip, um, it's almond milk. So I'm gonna take the shortcut on that instead of having to make my own. And basically, I'm just gonna score it in. Let me just score it. I can't do it where it stands, I don't think. Oh, I'll give it a go. Whoop. Just like that. Take a little candy corn wherever you wanna stick it and boom. How cute is that? And if you were doing them like adult beverages you know where they put in the jello that would be mighty cool huh all right so let me finish the rest up get everything plated up and we're getting ready to eat and there goes our candy corn jellos okay here we go this is what you're going to need for the candy fried candy corn you're going to need two cups of a bisquick type of mixture um I made this myself. I could put the recipe, at least I hope I'll try to put the recipe up. It's so simple. I actually have a, like a, a one minute video on how to do it. You're going to need some buttermilk. I don't have buttermilk. That's what's in here. I have plant-based heavy whipping cream. From the research I've done, it's a one-to-one -one ratio swap. If you're a buttermilk enthusiast, you might notice the difference, but I'm not, so I won't. Uh, you need an egg, you need a uh, three quarters cup of candy corn chopped coarsely, uh, a half a cup of corn flakes, and some powdered sugar for the finish, and also cooking oil. So, okay, so two cups of your Bisquick, or Bisquick-like, then you're going to need an egg. Let me just crack it over here because if I get the shell in there I won't know. In goes the egg. Now I have half a cup of heavy whipping cream. It says up to three quarters but I'm going to start with a half. And then we're going to mix that up. I'm going to start with this little fork here. And just give it a good old mixing. You want the dough to be kind of sticky, but not this dry. Let me get some more heavy whipping cream. It's another third of a cup. Not third of a cup, sorry, fourth of a cup. And then we're gonna mix that together. Just pull it in. Okay, to this, you see, it's just kind of like a loose, kind of loose, but shaggy. Going to add the cornflakes and then the, the candy corns I put in and had to pick out before. And now I'm going to give that a big old mix off camera. All mixed in. Let's move over to the frying pan. Just wanted you to see I have a foil lined pan just for easy cleanup with paper towel under it. 
This is where I'm going to stick the um, fried corns when they come out of the fryer. All right, I dropped a little test piece in there to see if it was going to cook. I think that's good. So it says to put about two inches of oil down. I did the best I could. I'm going to fry one first to see how big these things puff up so I know how much to put in. So I have like a little blop. And if your candy corn stick out and they start oozing out, that's okay. It's supposed to do that. Let's see what she does. Let's take a look, see, see what's going on under there. They pretty much held their size. Yeah, so however big you make them, it seems like they get slightly larger, but not so much larger that you can't judge how much you're putting in there. So let's just give that another minute and I'll show you what that looks like. And there you go. Just like that. We're gonna put this over here. We're gonna dust them with some powdered sugar. I almost forgot what it was called. All right, let's do another. So I'm just gonna do like a shaggy plop. Ooh, that heat got high. Let's turn that down. Just like that, we're just going to plop them in. You see the candy's cord over here cooking away. Can't pick it up because I got a whole, a holy spoon. It's my Sunday spoon. Woo. Good thing I turned it down. Those things are cooking fast. Turn it down just a little bit more. There you go, all done. All right, there they go. Are they pretty? No, they're not supposed to be, it's Halloween. Um, it's a learning curve, but the flatter you make them, the easier they cook. So what I'm gonna do now is I have some powdered sugar and I'm gonna pour some in here. Hopefully it doesn't clump out all over the place. Let me put it in a spot but there isn't everything. And then we're just gonna dust them on top. Not a lot, because these are sweet. These remind me of Zeppels. I tasted one, they kind of taste like it too. A little bit. It's Zeppel-ish, or Zeppoli, or however you say them. All right, there you go. There they go, all plated up, ready for the kids. For the mummies, we're going to need some hot dogs, some crescent rolls. For the um, the ghost fries, we're going to use regular potatoes. First thing I'm going to do is peel the potatoes and stick them in some water so that they don't change colors. That's the longest part of it. The hot dogs, it's just one, two, three, easy peasy. So that's what we're going to start with. I'm going to peel up the potatoes. Okay, so I tried a couple of slices. They're gonna come out really small because these are small potatoes. I almost thought about slicing it long ways, but eh, we'll do what we do. So we're just gonna use the slicer and I'm gonna slice this down to about, did anything come off? Yeah, it did. A quarter inch. That's a little bit thin that I want it, but I'm gonna make it thicker. And if it doesn't work, guess what? I'll get out the knife. Because if you do the knife, you control how thick it is. So you just slice it down like that. It's actually easier than doing this. I think I might stick with that technique. So just gonna do a couple of thick slices, not a couple, many, because I have a bunch of people I'm feeding, thick slices, and then I'm dropping it in some tap water, cold water. That's what we're gonna do. We're gonna continue on until we're done. I had the foil down because I thought it was gonna land on it, but if I'm gonna do it this way, I need to get a cutting board. Okay, that's what they look like. The water looks a little dirty, but I'm gonna leave them in there. I'm gonna rinse them and then put it back in some cold water and let them soak until I'm ready to start frying them. Okay, so we're gonna cut these potatoes into ghost shapes because I'm not, the, I'm not an artist. 
don't claim to be one. So I'm going to use either this knife, this knife, and I'm going to use this to help me along. What you're going to do is I have the water soaking in clear water over here. I rinse them very well. We're just going to try and make little ghosts out of these. So what I'm thinking is I'm going to cut in and out, up and down, and give some eyes. That's the plan. So I'm going to come around. I'm trying not to lose that much potato in cutting these. And I also wanted to mention the better potato to use would be the yellow potatoes. But I didn't have any and I didn't think of it, so there you have it. So I'm just going to come in with a little bit of a an out cut like that. Okay, then I'm going to go zigzagging, just little V's down in the bottom. No rhyme, no reason. These things are supposed to be ugly and ghoulish, right? Take those little pieces out that I cut. I don't think that piece went all the way through or something. There we go. And then for the eyeballs, I'm just going to take this and if I need to do two of them, I'll do it. But just poke it through. Boom. Uh, let's put another eye over here. And make it as big or as little as you want. I'm just kind of opening the hole up by not losing the potato, but there we go. So very little potato lost on that. And then we're going to give it a mouth. Uh, let's just go with a a open mouth. Just try to draw it on there real quick. Like that. Let me try and cut that out. Let me just stop right here and cut it out real quick. Okay, that's my first ghost. Let me go on and do the rest so I don't bore you with it. I am all done with my ghost potatoes. I actually had to get a little help from Eric because I was running out of running out of stamina so we they're different faces just cutesy cutesy stuff some we made smiles some we didn't some are x's and o's i think we have a pac-man in here that eric made so he made a a sad face but yeah so we had fun so i'm just gonna let these soak in the water so that they don't turn colors and then we're going to get to frying Let's them Let's get up. started on the potatoes. First thing I'm going to do is pour off the water, rinse them, and then I'm going to pat them dry. All right, so I rinse them, I drain them, I rinse them, and I'm just going to just pat them dry just like this. I'm going to try not to break them. I might put them out on a cookie sheet, but basically this is what I'm going to try and do because they don't need to be bone dry. I just don't want them watery for when I throw them in grease. Now you could bake these if you want, but I feel like when, you, when you're making homemade french fries, they always taste better fried. I forgot to mention, make sure you have your salt handy, because when you take these out of the fry pan, you want to add the salt while they're still hot. Okay, I drop one in just to make sure, and we're just going to drop these down in here, and whoop! A little bit of water still on. You see them popping. They're potatoes. We're just going to let these fry up till they're golden brown. Got one more in my hand. I got to try and get in that pot. And I'm doing them in batches. One, because it would take a significant amount of oil. And two, I want to control the temperature. It's easier to control it when it's smaller. For me, anyway. So we're going to keep these going until they're done. I'm watching how the eyes and the nose get 
the holes in here get bigger as they go. They're looking real spooky with the bubbles coming out of their eyes. When they get to a light golden brown color, try to fish it out. You want to take it out because they do darken as they sit. And I'm going to re-drop these when the kids get home so they get a nice crispy crunch to them. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to start taking these out one at a time. Look how cute they're turning out. Let's keep on going. There go our french fries. I, they're darker on purpose. I re-drop them because they're crispy. See my little man here with the arms and stuff? And Okay, for one pack of hot dogs, you're going to need one roll of crescent rolls. If you can get the kind that don't have seams in it, I guess you could use that. I'm just going to pinch it together. A pack of hot dogs. I have a block of cheddar cheese back here. It's a little weird because I'm trying to hold up the hot dog. And this is for the dairy-free version for Eric. That's his dairy-free cheddar. So first thing we're going to do is going to get the hot dogs out of the package and dry them off a little bit. Okay, so we're going to take the hot dogs out of the pack. Got a little paper plate under there, so I could be wasteful. And we're just going to pat them dry. You want them dry so that the crescent roll will stick to them. I want to get this out before it pops. Because if you keep it in the refrigerator to the last possible moment, I find it doesn't usually pop. But that doesn't mean it never pops. That's usually where I get the most success. And I beg, please don't pop, please don't pop. See? Crack it. There you go. So what we're going to do with this is we're going to roll out the dough. And then we're going to pinch the seams together. Okay. So you're just going to pinch the seams together like so. So I took the cheddar cheese and I cut them into slices like that. Okay? You don't have to do cheese. I just kind of want to. Okay. So you're going to cut this long ways, not short ways. My first one I did, I don't know what I was thinking. I just cut it long way, short ways. So just go right up the side. Oops. Hold on. Going crooked. Let me turn this this way because I'm standing off to the side. It's easier for me to do it like that. That's straight for me. And then you're going to cut out some strips, okay? Wide or skinny as you want, okay? And you're going to take your dry hot dog and you're going to take some cheese and you're going to put it on your hot dog, okay? Or not if you don't want to. Okay, that's got to be in the back. Move that up there so you can see what I'm doing. See, it's already starting to get soft on me. Might have made that a little bit too thick, but oh well. So, you're just going to wrap it around the dog. Like a mummy. Go all the way down. It's twisting. This is why I tried to hurry. It's all right, though. We're good. It's a little wonky, but if you don't do the cheese, it's not that wonky. I'm, yeah. Okay? So he went around like that. Now you're going to stretch it a little bit. And you're going to come back up just, you know, all raggedy. You don't want it like perfect. And just do it like that. You can go around as many or as few times as you like. Just like that. That's what you're going to do. And you're going to 
do that to the rest of them and then put them in the oven. Let me do the rest so I can do them quickly and knock it out. All right, I'm on the last one. I'm doing this one without cheese. It's, it's a lot easier to wrap when you don't do it that way, but it doesn't mean it's any more tasty. It's just easier to wrap. Just go up all kind of crazy. Put some somewheres, extras. And remember, it is puff uh, crescent roll, so it's going to puff up. It's not going to stay this skimpy. Okay. Got some with cheese, some without cheese. I got some on a pan already. So let's get these in the oven. I have it preheating. I think it's 375. And they're going to go in for anywhere from uh, 8 to 12 minutes. In they go. For the salad, it's just a pre-made salad mix. I added some cucumbers and some very red round tomatoes. And I'm going to top it with this red Catalina dressing and we're going to call it blood salad. I'm not going to tap, top it. I always said tap. I'm not going to top it until we're ready to eat it. Okay, so some of these didn't turn out so great and they were because they were in the refrigerator overnight. Uh, the kind that kind of stuck together, but you still get the point. Uh, I'm going to take a skewer and it's still a little bit hot, but we're going to give it eyeballs. I looked for googly eyes. I couldn't find them anywhere. So we're going with mustard eyeballs. Like that. Can you see him? Looks like he's got a hand sticking out. Just take your mustard and I'm just dip, oops, poked it in. Dipping them on. Maybe if I use the other side. Because I want bigger eyes than that was giving me. Boop. There we go. And that's our skeleton. Now these have some have cheese and some don't. I made his eyes crooked. And that's all I'm going to do, guys. I got to start plating things up. Okay, there go our hot dog mummies. Well, they're not the best looking. I always say I'm not the best decorator, but I try hard. But just because I'm not good at it doesn't mean you won't be. Okay, so there they go. There go our french fries. I, they're darker on purpose. I redrop them because they're crispy. See my little man here with the arms and stuff and Eric made a Pac-Man. There's a, quite a few of them because these we cut up yesterday. There they go, all plated up. Ready for the kids. And there goes our candy corn jellos. I think that's everything, so I'm gonna meet you at, at the, the table. table. And there's our little plates. Our whipped cream is melting on top of our jello things, but they're fine. You got your hot dogs, you got your 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 ghost french fries, you got Eric's hot dogs, you got those fried candy cords, you got your blood salad. You can't really see it on there very much, so let me add a little bit more. Little bit of blood down there. Woohoo! And there you go. Happy Halloween! Did I scare you? I thought I went a little bit loud. I was hollering. I shouldn't have hollered. So I got my ghosts, my mummy, my blood salad, and our desserts are kind of wilting as we stand. It took a little while to set up. So get your mummy. Now, I don't know if you want to dip it in mustard, if you want to dip it in ketchup, you just want to eat it dry. What do you want to start with? 
All right, try, let's try a french fry. Right. Dip it in your ketchup. Mmm. Mm. So good. A little cold. Still good. Mm -hmm. That's better than a regular, a home, nothing beats a homemade french fry. Yeah. Mm -mm. All right. Let's do the mummy next. All right. Okay. Are you going to dip it or are you just going to bite it? Now yours has cheese in the bottom. I'm going to bite it. The cheddar cheese. This this type of cheddar cheese, he's had plant-based before, but this is a newer one. It's that di uh, Daya, I forget what it's called, but their cheese is usually pretty good. Go for a bite. And I'm not a hot dog fan, so I'll let you know. Go. Mm. Not bad at all. Tastes like a grilled hot dog. That's really good. Mm, I like it. Me too. I mean, I wouldn't be like, hey, you know what I want? But for a hot dog, it's good. Want to try a little mustard? Yeah. Oh. Right I was like, no! <laughs> All right, ready? Mm -hmm. Go. Hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's really good. Mm -hmm. All right, so I'll take a little bit of lettuce, a little bit of tomato. Ooh! Popped. Let's see if you like that. Mm, that's yummy. Mm -hmm. You got a funny looking face. Does that mean you like it or you don't like it? I'm stressing it to be bad, but sweet. Yeah. Yeah. He had a funny look on his face, you know. I was afraid he didn't like it. I kind of hate to eat dessert while we're eating dinner. But. Let's just do it. Alright. Right. How about we take one. I'll take a nice puppy one from the middle. Thank you. You could have the bigger piece. Now, he's never had this in his life. Neither have I. I tasted a little piece earlier, but they've been sitting for a while, so let's go. Mm. Like that? That's really good. I would say it's zeppelish while donut-ish. Yeah. You like that? You going back for more? Since our uh, let me get let me get a spoon for the Jello. All right, we're back. I took the whipped cream out of the top because I'm not a fan of whipped cream at all. In any regular whipped cream, almond whipped, cream, I just don't like it. So I scraped mine out. So Eric, go down, go down, good and deep. Just get some of that because. There's a candy corn down in there, but you don't have to get the candy corn. Are you ready? Mm -hmm. Go. Mm -hmm. That's good, right? Yeah. yeah. Okay, so let me ask you a question. I like orange jello. And orange is Eric's favorite color. So, um, of the new things, on your plate. What was your first thing that you liked that was different uh, tasting? Definitely the mummy hot dogs, but I also really liked the sauce. Ah! See, here I thought he didn't like it. All right. Yeah, it's all good. I like it too. I prefer, I like the, the homemade french fries first, then the salad, then the hot dog. And who, who doesn't like dessert? Well, there you have it. Let me get everybody else fed. I hope you can create this. It's a little, it's not a, you know, a spectacular thing, but it's a fun thing. So I'll see you at the wrap up. Bye-bye. I'm back again with Tyler and Aiden. They have sampled the meal, not the desserts. So this is why we don't have to do the wrap up. Aiden, what are you thinking about the, the what do you think about the blood salad? It was amazing. What about the hot dog? Awesome. What about the homemade french fry? Perfect.
Got lots of adjectives. Tyler, what do you think about the blood salad? Really good. What did you think about the hot dog? Excellent. Ah, he's got he's got a bunch of adjectives too. And the homemade french fries. Very good. Very good. Well, there you go. All we gotta do is get to the sweets when we're done. And we're back for dessert. Yasmin's over there. She's got hi. a really bad... <clears throat> you say hi? Yeah, I did. She got a really bad cold and Aiden is immune compromised. So she's keeping a good distance. So she's gonna stand over there and do her taste test. Uh, let me ask you, what did you think, before you do the dessert, what did you think about dinner? It was absolutely different and it was really good in a different way though. Um, the french fries were actually tasty. Um, the mummies I liked and they were like, they were unique and also they tasted really good. They tasted good in the they oven. Did, yeah. They did. But try the fried uh, candy corn and see what you touch up here today. Try the candy corn and see how you like it. Okay, right. yeah. You could move on to the, uh, the candy. I want to say candy cane, candy corn. Jello. Wait until the summer, Grandma. Yeah, right? Then I can make candy cane ones, right? Make peppermint ones. Good. Oop, I see that. Oh, I grabbed it too. Ready? Oh, no, wait. Go ahead, go. That's all whipped cream. Get some of the. Oh, mmm. 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 Oh, you heard Yaya? Oh, mmm. Oh, she's going over there. <laughs> like mm. that? Mmm. Mmm. Yeah? And down when you get down in the middle, you'll find a surprise in there. Yasmin found the surprise. <laughs> She's eating the candy corn out of the middle. Real good. So what do you think overall? A winner, winner chicken dinner or nope, don't do it again. Winner. Winner, winner, winner chicken dinner. All right. See you in the next one. Bye-bye.